Julie, I, I actually think talking about the budget um, and the Deloitte report and the number of philanthropists, some of whom are uh, represented in the room today, who contributed to that report, um, the fact that that's had that type of impact, I mean, hats, hats off, Julie, um, to Australians investing in women, because that, that is genuine, genuine impact when we're talking about $22 billion directed to initiatives uh, for women and girls, which is fantastic. So congrats on that. Mm -hmm. Got my Just picking up on the, the sort of comment Sam dropped there around government is now making corporate Australia and very much so philanthropy in this country look like a laggard when it comes to gender lens application in the work that we're doing. You and I were talking um, about a 12 month in review since we last had this type of conversation and, and I had said um, 12 months ago, you know, we sometimes overcomplicate philanthropy we know that investing in women and girls leads to um, really significant impact. Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard in your role and the conversations that we're having across this room to get philanthropy to move on a gender lens? And what's the call to action for us as a group um, around that particular issue now that government's moved? Well, I'll have a go, but I think um, Doug and Julie probably want to speak about this one. Um, Thank you for calling it out. And we, in our board meetings, we often mm. lament exactly this, that what more do, does an organisation like ours do to make the case for philanthropy? And it is stunning that it's now government that has, has set a, a new standard, I think, um, federally in that regard. But we do sit around and we look at the, the top philanthropy list and we think, yeah. why, why would this conversation be so hard? And, and we, we get all sorts of feedback that boards find it that it's not right to do it, that they have their own systems, they trust their own systems that they want to be pure and just deal with the issues that they might deal with, so whether it's climate or health, um, and don't want to have that other thing come in. And I think it just shows a fundamental misunderstanding of what Julie has been advocating for, Eve before her and, and everyone else. It's a very simple thing. It's a very simple thing to do. Look at your the money you have to give, and applying a gender lens is simply saying, how can we make that work equally for women and girls as we do for men and boys? We've just got to do the analysis. Who are on our panels? That determine where our money goes. If there aren't women on those panels, then we're probably making some fundamental mistakes. When we invite people to come in, do we have a, uh, as the, the, the um, medical research board does now, do we have a, um, a quota? Are we going to be comfortable with the word quota to say we'll give 50% to those things that will advance the cause of women? And what, if not, why do we feel that, that we're not in that game? Um, and I think that leveraging and being very intentional about it is what we've not seen. Some do it brilliantly, so there are some outstanding other examples of it. But as a, as a sector, we scratch our heads often wondering why it's so difficult and whether we're using the wrong language um, or not making the case. And I think that's why the Deloitte work was so profound because it put a number on the economic uplift of the focus. Um, I'd say no matter what government is doing, it doesn't mean that philanthropy or corporates are, left off, are off the hook. And I think it, it says even more so that, that the focus on, on gender has become more profound and the opportunity for philanthropy to do this kind of heavy lifting that almost no one else can do. Um, put money to work that often in other parts of our economy can't do um, and, and really help direct that. So I just say this, that the prompt is if, if the federal government's now doing that and setting up a new standard, then I hope philanthropy sees that as a mark of something to aim for and to go go hard um, and be proud of it. And we were often talked about having a, um, a, a top 10 of the philanthropists in the country giving to women on the Fin Review rather than just top 10 philanthropists. So call it and judge it and make it a, make it a race to the top if possible, um, whilst respecting the fact that philanthropy is an act of generosity in the hands of people who care very deeply about the impact that you want to have. So it's not to be critical, it's to just add a, a layer to say you can do so much more with it. And we know that when you do it, it lifts, it lifts us all.